Hi, this is Eric White. This is the third in a series of screencasts on Document Builder 2.0. In this screencast, I'm going to take a stroll through Document Builder 2.0 source code and just point out some key features of the source code. This will help if you ever need to maintain this source code for some reason or if you just want to learn more about the OpenXML formats and learn more about word processing ML. First we're going to look at the class document builder. As you'll notice it's a static class so it's a class that contains static members only. First let's look at the two public overloads of build document. Here is the overload of build document that takes a file name and you can see that what this does is it creates a new word processing document using that file name. It then calls an internal private overload of build document. This second overload is very similar to the first one. The only difference is it creates a memory stream. It creates the word processing document on the memory stream. It then converts the memory stream to a byte array and then returns a new WML document constructed from that byte array. This is the overload that you would most often use when you are writing code to operate in the context of something like SharePoint or a web server where you want to operate on documents entirely in memory. Here is the private version of build document. It takes a list of sources and it also takes a word processing document as output. This is the word processing document that was constructed in one of the two public overloads of build document. Here is an array of interesting artifacts in the markup. This array contains element names and a list of attribute names for each element name. And these are elements that combined with those attributes contain a relationship ID that can point to some other part. So by creating this dictionary of elements and a list of attribute names, it allows us to write much more general code. We don't have to handle each situation specifically. The code just works off of this list to form appropriate relationships. So for instance, here you can see the a.blip element and you can see the two attributes associated with a.blip, embed and link. And those are the attributes that could contain relationship IDs that point to another part and that we need to then copy a part from the source document to the destination document and then set these attributes to match to the relationship ID of the newly constructed part in the new document. Dropping down here, here is where the code constructs a list of image data. This is the data structure that helps us to eliminate duplicate images in the document. And here we add the main document part. That newly constructed document has nothing in it after it's constructed. So here we add the main document part. And we add the root element of document and the child element of document, which is W colon body. Then testing to make sure that there is at least one source. The code, first of all, calls this method copy starting parts. Let's go take a look at that method. This method copy starting parts takes as arguments the source document, the new document, and the list of images. That list of images gets passed around a lot because there are a fair number of places in build document where parts refer to images and we want to make sure that we don't add duplicate images to the newly constructed document and then you can run down through here you can see various pieces of code here's the code to add the new core properties part from the existing core properties part here's code to add the extended file properties part here's code to add the custom file properties part the document settings part the web settings part the theme part and so on 
Here's code to add the styles part and the styles with effects part, numbering definitions part, and the font table part. You'll see at various places, such as with the copying of the settings part, that this code calls the method copy related parts for content parts. And this is the code that looks through that particular part and looks for elements and attributes that define relationships to other parts and then copies those parts. So for instance with the custom file properties part that part cannot have an implicit or explicit relationship to other parts so there's no need to call the copy related parts for content parts method but in the case of the document settings part it certainly does have relationships to other parts so we need to call the copy related parts for content parts to copy over images and whatnot. After copying the starting parts, the code iterates through all the sources in the list of sources that are passed as an argument to build document. And the first thing that it does is it calls this method test for unsupported document. I made it easy to comment out this code test for unsupported documents if you go to the beginning and undefine the symbol test for unsupported documents then this code won't get compiled into build document the only reason I did that is that test for unsupported document could potentially take a bit of time and if you know in your situation that you are always passing in supported documents then you might want to disable this code. What you'll see is it calls the method test part for unsupported content a number of different times and in test part for unsupported content it calls the descendants method where it looks at every single descendant in the part. Then for every single descendant in that part it looks at every single attribute in every single element looking for artifacts for content that Document Builder is not designed to support. It doesn't make sense to support such things as sub-documents. I decided somewhat arbitrarily to not support ActiveX controls. This is a somewhat old technology. Someone building an application using Document Builder is probably using modern techniques such as content controls. Document Builder doesn't support assembling documents that contain alt chunk. This doesn't really make sense to support alt chunk. Document Builder in one way is addressing the same need as alt chunk, just in a different approach. Document Builder also doesn't support content parts. And it looks for some obsolete namespaces and doesn't support those. A couple of other key points. Document Builder doesn't support mail merge documents, it doesn't support documents with ink, and it doesn't support documents with frame sets and frames. Those are not really features that you will probably be using when you're building an application that uses Document Builder. Now back in the build document method, it iterates through all of the different sources. Here's the method that does all the work, this method append document. and if we go to append document it does a few things first thing it does is calls this method fix ranges and what fix ranges does is it goes into the range of content that is to be moved to the new document and it looks for things such as if there is a comment range start but no comment range end in the content to be moved, it adds a comment range end at the very end of the content. And if it finds a comment range end in the content to be moved to the new document, but it doesn't find a comment range start, it sets up things so that the comment range start is moved to the very beginning of the range of content. Let me show you the behavior that this enables. I'm going to go into comment 2. Here I'm going to delete this comment and delete this comment. I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to start here and move to here and I'm going to insert a comment.
So I've added a comment that this comment goes from the first paragraph all the way through and ends in the middle of the third paragraph. I'm going to save this. I'm going to go to my document builder example. I'm going to modify this example just a bit. We're taking all of comment1.docx, but now I'm going to go to this source that says to take content from comment2.docx, and I am going to add an argument to which says start with the third paragraph and take only that paragraph. Now let's run it. And let's look at the resulting built document. And what you can see here is this paragraph that has the comment where the comment range start is adjusted comment. It's been inserted properly into the new document, but the comment range start has been moved forward to the beginning of the content that was brought into the assembled document. So going back to Document Builder, that's what this code fix ranges does is, is it takes care of this issue for a number of different varieties of markup including comments, bookmarks, permissions, move from, move to, etc, etc. Now going back to append document. The next thing that append document does is it adds relationships that the main document part has to other parts and it copies related parts for content parts for the main document part. It's got a bit of code for adding sections and its dependencies. It copies styles and fonts. It copies numbering, comments, footnotes, endnotes. At this point here it has to adjust unique IDs and if we look at this adjust unique IDs means that it needs to go through and look at every bookmark in the entire document and make sure that every bookmark has a unique ID. What you will find is all of these methods follow the pattern that we examined in detail with comments. It goes through the markup, it looks for things that need to be copied from the old document to the new document, it copies those things from the old document to the new document, it adjusts the markup in the temporary copy of the source document. And by the time we get to this point right here, all of that markup in the temporary copy of the source document has now been adjusted so that that markup is ready to be inserted into the new document. All relationship IDs have been adjusted so that they point to the newly constructed parts that have been moved from the old document to the new document. Comment IDs have been adjusted so that they're ready to be inserted into the new document and point to the correct comments in the comments parts. And then this is where it finally inserts that new content into the new document. So this screencast should give you a pretty good idea of how Document Builder is constructed. We haven't obviously touched on every single detail, but we've touched on the main points about how Document Builder works. I've had a number of different motivations for building Document Builder. First and most importantly is to shed light on how OpenXML works and how word processing ML works. It shows with concrete examples how to work with the interrelated markup in OpenXML word processing ML. It in fact also serves as a form of documentation of interrelated markup. It doesn't handle every single case but it handles the vast majority of cases that you will find in word processing ML. The next motivation is that this functionality is important. It enables a lot of scenarios that are fairly difficult if you don't have code such as Document Builder. And my last motivation is it was just plain fun to write it. So I hope it's useful to you. I hope that it helps to illuminate word processing for you. 
please feel free to forward any feedback to me at eric at ericwhite.com. Thanks for watching.